Something as simple as using a different brush size and using a different brush shape can literally <laughs> revolutionize, change, revitalize your creative life. And that is what I feel happened in this video. I'm going to be highlighting different watercolor brush shapes that I have been experimenting with, the results that I got, and also how I like to familiarize myself when it comes to using new brushes and how hopefully that will also help you in your brush journey. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, there were some bits that were a little bit, you know, tricky, but we got there, we persevered. I love, love, love the results. A super special thank you to Paint in Hiding, who is a fellow YouTuber and actually sent me these brushes, just asked me to pick some and was kind enough to send them to me. They are lovely brushes from Rosemary & Co. And I have a full unboxing video that I will link for you where I highlight all the brushes that I got. My go-to brushes tend to be the Princeton Aqua Elite round brushes in size eight and 12, but I wanted to get outside my comfort zone and see what would happen. So for this video and for this request, I actually picked completely different brushes. The shapes that we'll be looking at in this video are the Cat's Tongue in size 10, series 316, the Quarter Inch Sword Brush, series 309, and last but not least, the 3 8 inch <laughs> Dagger Brush, which is a series 311. So I essentially did the same painting or similar style painting using the three different brushes. And I'm curious to know if you have a favorite looking at them. Is there one that you think worked really nicely? Can you tell which brush I use for which painting? The one that by far I am currently the most perplexed and interested by is the sword brush. Confused, intrigued, in love. It's a mixture of different feelings. Almost like a super long, stretched out, thin dagger brush is the Quarter Inch Rosemary & Co. Series 309 sword brush. And the way that I tend to like getting familiar with my paint brushes is to almost do swatches the same way that you would with paints. The aim being to try and do thin strokes, thick strokes, different shapes, and just really explore what they can do. And you can see light strokes, no problem. And then when it starts to get interesting, big wash, no problem. Then this, when we start to do this, I get lost. Also down, down, but light, heavy, light. Getting a scrap piece of paper and doing thin lines, thick lines, applying different amounts of pressure, different amounts of water can be a really great and carefree way to learn about the brush that you have. And these are just some of the shapes that I was able to get. I thought it would be easy. I thought it would be nice, straightforward super easy and that my art would look the same but to me especially looking at it my art looks completely different you may look at it and disagree but let me know what you think i still maintain as fun and as relaxing as carefree as doing swatches may be the best way to really learn about your materials is to actually do a painting with them so that's what we're going to do so after you've done those kind of swatches and really learned the different shapes that you can get with your brushes try and do a painting or even better do several paintings so for this background i'm just using the three quarter inch rosemary co oval wash brush series 312 because it's massive and i can just get those colors down really quickly so it's voice over me because although i recorded this real time there was just a lot of broken sentences and and silence as I was trying to figure out exactly what I was doing but just to give you some tips and some observations that I was having from when I was actually painting the first thing is that the sword brush is like very soft and holds a really good amount of water which is quite nice but because it's so soft and because of the shape it didn't really work quite nicely when I was trying to take paint out of half pans for example like I wasn't able to load the full brush with paint so it's one of these paint brushes that I think works quite nicely or at least for me works better when I have like an actual separate palette or I have like a big mixing space that I can just mix the whole brush into rather than using it to dick out the paint from an actual half pan or even a full pan if that makes sense. Yeah when I was using the tip of the brush it came to a really nice fine tip which was great which really gave me a bit more control but then when I tried to push myself to try and use the body of the brush to try and use it as you can see I didn't even know how to like put my hand it just all felt very different it almost felt as if I was painting with my left hand <laughs> like that is how foreign it all felt and I don't know if you can see it but slowly but surely I just end up bringing my hand closer and closer and closer and closer to the actual um, bristles of the brush in an attempt to just get a bit more control and every so often I would find myself just using the tip of the brush because that I can control and then I'd be like no like I need to try and utilize the brush and really experiment with it and see why I'm struggling with it and see all the different shapes 
shapes that it can make. And this is what I mean about something so simple, something as simple as trying a different brush shape can have such a huge impact on your art. I found that my brush strokes were a lot straighter by the nature of the shape of the brush. I found that I had less control than I <laughs> that I wanted, that my florals to me looked like sharper, more angular, if that makes sense. And it's something super simple. And I was talking about this in a live stream. It was almost like a sweet spot of you have got something that you haven't quite mastered that you don't quite get so you want to keep trying so that you get better at it and you can understand it a bit better and it becomes a little bit more comfortable to use but at the same time it's not so far that you are just frustrated and hating the process I was definitely enjoying the process but it was a learning curve <laughs> in fact it still is a learning curve and I can show you a few other bits of art that I have created as a result because I kept picking up these brushes in an attempt to just get better at them and understand them a bit better. Doing something as simple as just next time that you buy a brush rather than buying the same brushes that you get all the time. And I'm speaking from experience as someone who has like a lot of round brushes and a lot of filbert brushes. Try buying one inexpensive brush that has a slightly different shape and see what that does to your art and see how enjoyable it can be and how different your art is. Something as simple as using a different brush ended up yielding so much inspiration and I know to some they may think oh but you're painting florals and I actually would recommend painting something that you're relatively comfortable with initially so that you yourself can observe the differences a bit more. I'm used to painting florals a lot so although some of the differences to some may seem subtle to me as someone who paints florals so much I could really tell the things that I was finding easier and the things that I was finding more challenging almost like an experiment where you have your controls because I knew that the differences weren't attributed to the paints that I know and love and use all the time which are Roman Schmoll. It wasn't because of the paper that again I'm very familiar with and it wasn't because of the subject. It was the brushes <laughs> and it was me trying to get used to the brushes. As I've mentioned in terms of some of the properties this sword brush was very soft. It held a large amount of water and I don't know if you can tell that's me trying to like demonstrate just how soft it is and how flexible it is. Just a gentle reminder that if you're enjoying this video please consider hitting the like button also consider subscribing if you want to see more videos like this and the notification bell if you don't want to miss anything. Not only does it make a massive difference to me and to this channel and to my art journey but honestly <laughs> it keeps me going when I'm editing. I'm actually not lying about that. <laughs> <laughs> but let's continue with the video. And then next we have the dagger brush and this is the dagger 3 8 inch series 311 and I'll just show you some of the brush strokes that we can get. Nice thin lines, perfect. Even thinner if I'm lighter on the pressure. Thick. Exploring the different shapes and pressures that you can apply and water that your paint brushes can hold is something that I really recommend you try doing with the brushes that you already have. As helpful as it is to watch videos like this and to see the shape so that you know in theory what is possible, it's almost like a hand-eye coordination kind of thing. Actually practicing it yourself will teach you so much more than watching any video could. It's funny because on a practice sheet I'm like yeah this is so easy and then when I try to put it together in a painting it's like I don't understand what's happening. <laughs> And that is why I recommend also doing paintings. But it's more than just the pressure that you're applying, although that's a good thing to start with, but also how you hold the brush. Like the closer you hold it to the bristles, the more control you have, the further away, the less control you have. And just twisting the brush, doing all these things that perhaps, you know, there's so much that you can achieve with the brushes that you already have that perhaps you wouldn't have thought to try, or certainly I hadn't thought of trying until I got these brushes and it felt like learning something all over again. So here are a few things to try. Make thin strokes, make thick strokes, apply different amounts of pressure without taking the brush off the paper. Try rotating your brush as you're painting. Hold your brush really close to the bristles and then try holding it really far away and see what happens. Try dry brush technique, try loading it with water, try doing one continuous brush stroke with as much water as possible to see how much water it holds. 
honestly the options are endless so in this painting i am recreating a similar thing to the first painting i'm doing roses again but this time using the dagger brush and i must say it felt so much easier to me using the dagger brush now because i had been using the sword brush before and i find that more challenging this is the second time that i have used this brush and the previous painting was the second time that i had used a sword brush and the first time that i used it i started with a cat's tongue which i found relatively challenging but okay then i went to the dagger brush that I found very challenging and then with the sword brush it just honestly felt like my hands weren't doing what my brain was telling it to do <laughs> but again not to the frustrating level where I wanted to give up but just enough to like intrigue me and want to like conquer these brushes and master using these brushes I found that one of the challenges that I was facing with both of these brushes the sword brush and the dagger brush is that I don't like or I don't tend to want to have very straight lines in my floral paintings I want them to be a little bit looser a little bit more delicate and organic and I find that completely straight lines I don't tend to see that much in nature whereas because these bristles have a straight line I kept accidentally creating straight lines and I kind of felt like my artwork in itself was a bit more angular like it's not necessarily stiffer but just had more straight lines or things looked a little bit straighter and less curvy than I would normally have done I was initially trying to fight this as much as I could and then it kind of it kind of inspired this uh need to experiment because I was like okay these paintings look different to me <laughs> perhaps not drastically different to others but they look quite different to me the straight lines making it feel kind of edgy and thus I started experimenting even more I was just like okay well I'm trying new brushes I might as well just go for it and just see how I can change my florals and what different things I can do and honestly this led to days of fun of painting of trying different materials of having mixed media this is how I then started adding gold again to my paintings doing dry brush techniques where I was stroking across it um, and also doing things like having black run across my paintings because it felt edgier so I was like huh what's edgier than black nothing else <laughs> and, and thus I started applying it and this is what I'm trying to say sometimes using something that is slightly different or that pushes you slightly outside your comfort zone can inspire you to try other things it's not necessarily about the brushes themselves although I do enjoy using them and I they are quite nice and I keep going back to them but I think it's about sometimes trying something different maybe picking up a supply that you haven't used in a little while or picking up something that isn't traditionally thought of to you know use for art or that you don't normally use in your art or a subject that you don't normally try and letting that fuel inspiration and creativity and I think this is especially good for art block especially because you end up mixing something that you love and you enjoy even if you're not necessarily enjoying it that much now with something that is slightly different and intriguing and again the key thing is for it to be intriguing but not to be frustrating and demoralizing <laughs> if you start feeling like that then pick something else that's how I felt and honestly I felt so so inspired and I'm still running with it like <laughs> you'll probably have noticed that I'm having like more live streams and I'm doing more paintings and I think a big part of that was just tapping into that need to be curious and to experiment and to throw caution to the wind and play around so yeah this painting I found easier to create with using the dagger brush I kind of felt like it wasn't as angular and as straight as the sword brush but I was still able to see some differences from what I would normally do and I kept trying to get myself to stop cheating by just using the tip and actually using the shape of the brush to create shapes that I wouldn't have done so otherwise next we have the cat's tongue so this is a size 10 cat's tongue a series 316 by rosemary and co but not only that um paint and hiding also let me pick a travel brush so i actually got a cat's tongue travel brush because again i wanted to have a different arsenal of shapes in my travel brush set so that i'm able to carry them safely with me and i was just super super intrigued by the cat's tongue and in hindsight if i can find a dagger brush and a sword brush as a travel brush as well well I'll be like so so happy <laughs> like so 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 happy but these are some of the shapes that I was able to create with the cat's tongue and one of the things that I found really interesting is just even though the brush itself is big it comes to such a nice thin point that I could get such 
nice thin crisp straight lines and one of the things that I value in brushes is versatility like I tend to try using one brush to do the entire painting and thus I really value having a paintbrush that can give me a wide range of different shapes and this one really could and I'm going to demonstrate that in the painting coming soon and this is just me showing you some of the other swatches that I did with the other brushes that I received very kindly from Paint and Hiding. So I'll link the video for you if you want to see the full ensemble of paint brushes that I now have in my paint arsenal and the different shapes that they are able to create. I found the cat's tongue a lot more comfortable to use I suspect in part because it's almost like a slimmed down round brush <laughs> so the edges were a bit more curved which gave me shapes that I was a bit more familiar with but at the same time the actual shape of it meant that I could use it to create leaves that were slightly different shapes to what I would normally use again I was naturally finding myself getting so close I was almost touching the bristles and then when I would notice that I was doing that I would try to be a bit more mindful and just loosen my grip and kind of move my hand up the barrel trying not to hold it all the way down <laughs> so we've already touched on the benefits of just playing around on a scrap piece of paper to see all the different marks that you can make with brushes we've touched on how holding the brushes differently applying different amounts of pressure can also give you some really cool effects and then another thing that I also started doing when I was using these brushes which initially was a bit of an accident but then I really loved was applying different colors to my brushes at the same time so for example if I was doing this flower adding a little bit of that bright phalo blue but maybe also adding some ultramarine blue which is a bit darker or adding a slightly lighter blue so as I'm playing around with rotating my brush with applying different amounts of pressure with using different edges on the brushes I am also getting a whole bunch of different colors on there so this honestly made it so fun especially when it came to the leaves they just ended up being a bit more dynamic and it was also more organic so quite a lot of the time sometimes I will go back and add extra colors to my leaves while the leaves are still wet but in adding multiple colors or two or three colors to the brush and then letting it happen on its own again it kind of made me a little bit more carefree when I was painting a little bit more relaxed and also I really enjoyed the effects it was initially kind of an accident because it almost kept happening with the um with the sword brush and because it's so long as well it just gave me some really cool effects and then it's something that I just kept doing with all the brushes so by all means you can use them with any shape you know round or dagger or whatever but again it's something really fun to try and all of this is to say that there is something so free and so exciting about trying something that makes you excited to experiment because it's new and you almost feel like you can't fail and you can't get it wrong because you're just learning and you're just exploring and you're just messing around the same way that children do when they, when they get exposed to something new. They just go in there and they try it and that's how they learn. And honestly, I had such a good time doing this and it led to even more art and experimenting with some really cool techniques and I really hope that this video has shown you how to get acquainted with brushes different brush shapes that you could consider experimenting with that you haven't before and also just how experimenting with something different can revitalize your art this was done with the sword this was done with a dagger and this was done with a cat's tongue if you are still watching then you are most definitely a real mvp and i really 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 appreciate you let me know that you are still watching by telling me two things first thing tell me which out of these brushes that are featured in this video is your favorite and second thing if you have a favorite brush shape already then let me know because i am super curious to know what you have been using in your art and also let me know what you use it for because I'm kind of curious if certain people lean to certain brush shapes depending on what it is that you tend to create. If you enjoyed this video then you will definitely enjoy this one that I'm linking for you that will not only highlight my favorite art supplies but also the art that I created with it. If you're a brush lover and you want to see all the brushes that I got from Rosemary & Co and why then be sure to check out this video as well. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week. Bye!